Okay, uh, hello everybody. Just going to do a little quick tour of my uh, freshwater uh, Florida native little miniature fish room here. This is right next to my office and storage room I have. Uh, over to the right, this is actually salt water as an eel tank and a refugium. So on the left side, I've got six different uh, aquariums uh, with uh, primarily Florida natives, both fish and plants and some uh, crustaceans and stuff invertebrates. So take a quick look uh, with what I've done here. Uh, this has all been for the most part used equipment I had. I had a lot of aquarium stuff in storage so the only thing I really had to buy to do this uh, I needed some additional uh, LED strip lights, I needed some additional uh, sponge filters and I bought one five gallon aquarium to give me six. Other than that I, this is all old equipment laying around I wanted to use. I didn't want to buy as little as possible uh, in order to put this together so just keep that in mind and so let's uh, come over and take a look so it's a little bit messy in here but and we'll start with this aquarium here okay and this is a uh, actually a five and a half gallon with a ten gallon footprint it's like a, sh a shallow five gallon uh, tank Okay, so in here, uh, this is my main least uh, killifish tank. Okay, a Florida native. These are a live bearing species. And like all my tank, it's set up with a, a sponge filter, a small sponge filter. It's, there's also a few ghost shrimp in there. And it's primarily using uh, water lettuce as you know, natural filtration and cover. Um, this is probably the one hardest to keep uh, clean, but I don't really obsess about that. Um, because these water, uh, floating water plants are so uh, efficient at filtering the water out. So I don't, you know, really even clean it that much. Maybe every three or four weeks, I'll vacuum it, do a major water change. And it's been fine. It's been going for like uh, over seven, eight months. Um, so this is where I keep the main amount. A lot of them are in the back hiding right now. Uh, but you can probably see some creeping around in the back there. Um, so I have a lot of adult females, some males, and a lot, of, and some babies. And then uh, periodically I'll take uh, some of the juveniles and babies and move them over to the smaller uh, two-gallon tanks, which are the ones where I normally will ship out when I sell. I'll have them in there, and I'll take them from there, and then I'll transfer from here uh, in there uh, to replace them. So these least killifish, uh, really easy. Um, really relaxing to look at uh, they do pop out babies but you know not at a constant rate oh yeah there's one getting close so this system really works well using uh, these floating plants works really well so again I'm on since I'm in Southwest Florida we have very hard water so everything I have in this kind of native setup is uh, is based on what's native to around here we have hard water in our uh, canals and uh, lakes and stuff so in the hard the tap water is hard water so it's just very easy the plants like the hard water the fish like it so the shrimp the snails you know there's some Columbia striped snails in there uh, also which are in almost all the tanks too so it's a really good setup and works really well all right, so we'll uh, take a look at the one underneath it, which is a, a wild green molly tank. And I've caught all of these fish uh, in local freshwater canals around here. Okay, of course, the least killifish, they do breed and they produce their own babies. So some of these are captive bred, some of them are wild. All right, underneath, um, I have, uh, these are wild green mollies, so, okay, that I've caught. We also have a lot of babies. There's been breeding in here, so there's a lot of uh, captive bred babies in here. Uh, there's about 10 of them in this 10-gallon tank and doing quite well. Um, oh, by the way, I mostly feed flake. I also give them some of these uh, shrimp pellets here. They love those, and that's what I feed the uh, least killifish. I just give them flake. The babies eat it. I crush it up. And the adults eat it just fine, so I just keep it simple. So the mollies in here, you know, you'll see them schooling. You know, they like to school around. Um, the males kind of have a more coloration on them on the, on like the chest, kind of like a orangish color. Um, you know, and they have more color in that, but you really need the exact right lighting and tank conditions for their color to come out. 
So, you know, you don't see much color uh, in here the way I have it set up. But this is really easy for me to keep them going. It just requires very little maintenance, very little work. Um, and by the way, you know, everything you see in this video, I do sell these periodically, a lot of the different things, plants, fish, crustaceans, snails. So uh, just check in the description box uh, below if you're interested uh, to my eBay uh, link and you can check it anytime and see what I have available to sell. So these mollies do really well. You know, they could be with any of the other fish too. They do fine with the other fish. Um, I just have them in a species only tank here. So, you know, I like the way this works. Uh, they're interesting to watch their schooling behavior because the other fish I have don't really school. This is really the only uh, type of Florida native fish I have that has uh, that schooling behavior that you'll see. So let's just see, move it over a little bit. You can see I'm kind of schooling there. Alright, so now we're going to move up uh, right next to it here. Here's the only aquarium I bought recently. This is a five and a half gallon. So we'll start with that. Okay, now this is uh, the most recent tank I started. This is specifically for the bluefin uh, killifish. Um, so again, another Florida native, as you can see. So I have both males and females in here. The males have uh, kind of the flared fins. They have reddish and bluish color on their uh, fins, you can see. And the females are just kind of plain striped. Okay, so these are really mellow fish. Um, you know, that you don't really see them chasing each other around at all. Of course, the least killifish are like that too. They're very mellow. Um, but these are mellow too, and I've got about eight or nine of them in here right now with same setup. I do have some water hyacinth in, in this one as well as the, the molly tank, as you saw. So I'm primarily using water hyacinth and water lettuce. That's about all that I have. Again, it's been working just great. Um, it just seems to filter the water well. You do need to keep you know, I only have one LED strip light on most of these tanks, and I've noticed the plants do a lot better if you... I've got it 14 hours on a day right now, and that definitely seems to be helping them uh, stay healthy. They kind of start just kind of wilting when I had it on 11 hours. Um, I do have these plants outside also, and uh, some container ponds. I have several container ponds, so if I see a plant starting to look a little sickly I'll switch it out I'll take it outside put it in the pond and bring one in from one of the container ponds to switch it out um, the fish we've seen so far don't really uh, nibble on the on the actual roots too much they'll forage around looking for stuff to eat a little piece of algae and stuff um, but they don't really do anything to hurt the plant as but I do have some fish that do actually cause a little bit of damage and I have to switch them out more often so these are the least killifish, okay, and very mellow. Uh, they can be put with other fish too, and I've had some uh, in tanks with other fish. They're not real, they're kind of picky eaters, so I've been giving them uh, these bug bites, and they'll kind of sniff around, they look interested when I put it in there, but they don't like swarm around and eat it like crazy, but they do look interested and they start kind of uh, snooping around looking, and it looks like they're eating it, but they're just not they're not active, real aggressive eaters. Um, that's part of why I wanted them in their own tank as well. I just think they do better like that since they're not real active, aggressive eaters. All right, so this is our bluefin killifish. All right, next door to the bluefin killifish, I have my two two-gallon uh, aquariums where I keep the other least killifish. Okay, so I'll put in uh, a lot of juveniles or babies in here to kind of grow out and along with a few adults. And, you know, as when I'm ready to sell some online on eBay, then this is where they'll come from. They've been in this tank. So two gallon tanks work really fine for these. I mean, you can have 10 or 12 of them in here. Really, as long as you got, you know, you need a lot of plant cover, I think, uh, to make them comfortable. But they do fine. They're small, you know, the females only get to one and a half inches long, and the males don't even hit an inch. They're real small. So they're really a great small aquarium fish. So this is a standard two and a half gallon tank. So there's a lot of juveniles and babies in here and a few adults, as you can see. And then right behind it is a... Uh, 
two gallon uh, hex tank which we'll take a quick look at that's got a little bit of a different setup um, than the other ones okay here's a two gallon uh, hex aquarium you know I have several more of these I am not using right now but I've got extra ones so again I have the same setup as the other one um, this one doesn't have an LED light I'm just using the uh, lighting fixture that came with it and I have a power compact uh, plant bulb in there and uh, the plants seem to do okay with that uh, pretty well. This is kind of an interesting setup. It's a different look. Uh, again, they do just fine in here. So there's probably, what, a dozen in there. Most of them are juveniles uh, or babies, but there's some adults, two or three uh, close to adult fish in there. And it doesn't seem that crowded, you know, at all. It's just, it works really well. These are just a great small aquarium type of fish. Again, very relaxing. The males chase each other a little bit, but not too much. Um, so it's kind of just a little, very relaxing uh, little tank. All right, now take us to our last uh, aquarium. This is the largest. This is a 29 gallon long. So that's right below this. So we'll take a look. Okay, so this is the one tank that I have kind of a mixture of fish. I have some non-natives in here. I have some assorted platies, which is actually what started out in this tank. Um, but as you can see, there are some native fish in here, and the primary one uh, is your Florida flagfish. So I've got four of them currently in here, or five of them, I'm sorry, two males and uh, three females. Okay, um, They are kind of hard on the plants. They do nibble on plants a lot, live plants, so I do have to change out the plants more often um, than the other tanks. You know, still, plants will be in, all right in here for a couple months, but... Just keep that in mind for flagfish. They they do like to nibble, and they do they are aggressive in that they eat babies. Um, the platies were having a lot of babies, and the babies all disappeared uh, pretty soon after I added the flagfish. Uh, I also had some ghost shrimp in here, and those disappeared too. So I think it's obvious it was the flagfish at work. So just keep that in mind. Babies aren't going to survive very well. Another thing I have in here are. Uh, some uh, Gambusia mosquito fish, just the melanistic kind. So there's one going by right there. So you can see I should have about four in here. Um, I don't have the playing Gambusia. I have them out in my uh, container ponds. But, you know, I wanted something with color. And, you know, the regular mosquito fish are just so boring. You know, no color at all. But I have caught these uh, melanistic uh, Gambusia. So I have about four in there right now, as you can see. I also have a different kind of snail in here. I have olive nerite snails, which I catch on the seawall in my backyard, and they're coming from a brackish water system. But you can uh, acclimate them to full-strength fresh water or full-strength salt water, which I've, I've done for both. So there's some in here. I have those for sale uh, every now and then. You can see some of their eggs are on the glass. They won't develop in here. They need uh, brackish water for the eggs to develop and hatch and grow out. So, but they do lay their eggs on the on the glass uh, periodically. So this is a really interesting tank, you know, with a variety variety of colors in here. I uh, really like it. I don't always have this many plants in here. There's a lot of plants in there now. I just added some because I just got some more uh, water lettuce. But you know, if I sell uh, any plants uh, that I have in the pond outside, then I'll move some out to the pond to restock if I need to. But you know, during a big part of the year in the pond, the plants are growing so fast in there that I don't even need to go out and collect any, usually. So this is, you know, a very, I think, uh, not probably my nicest looking tank. Uh, again, this was a used 29-gallon tank I had sitting around for years. And again, I, I didn't want to buy any tops. I'm just using, you know, extra uh, glass tops that I had laying around. I had a bunch of stuff, so I just kind of mixed and mashed to try to create a top so I could safely uh, put the LED lights on. So if you have any questions, uh, you know, feel free to uh, leave a message in the description box. Like I said, if you're, if you want to check my eBay uh, listing uh, in the description box below, you can see if I have anything for sale. If you're interested, uh, possibly in looking at any of this, uh, I do have thing a lot of this stuff for sale uh, periodically when I when I'm ready. All right, so uh, that's a close look. I might we might take a closer look at some of these other things in more details with separate videos. We'll see. This is just kind of a general introduction to my little miniature fish room and 
coordinative uh, setup. All right, we'll see you later.